Thank you very much. Uh, by the way, Afghanistan's ruling Taliban movement on Tuesday said that uh, Osama bin Laden, uh, they are closely allied with him, was not responsible for the attacks on the United States. What happened in the United States, according to the Taliban, was not a job of ordinary people. It could have been the work of governments. Osama bin Laden cannot do this kind of work. Neither can we, a Taliban spokesman said uh, from the southern city of Kandahar. The uh, Taliban, of course, a very militant and very conservative uh, Islamic organization and widely believed to be harboring Osama bin Laden, a very wealthy Saudi dissident who has a very sophisticated apparatus uh, at his disposal. Uh, he has not been seen for some time, although he does appear from uh, time to time on some Islamic uh, media outlets. Uh, one uh, reporter who has been in touch with him said that three weeks ago he said uh, an attack was planned on the United States, but that, of course, has not yet been uh, verified. He is, at the moment, I think fair to say, at the top of everyone's list of suspects. But as we have learned on these occasions in times past, uh, it's often not the best thing to do to make a premature judgment. There is the picture that we have often seen of him as he has declared a holy war against the United States. Let's go to General Norman Schwarzkopf now, who had the Southern Command and, of course, commanded the forces during the uh, Persian Gulf War. General Schwarzkopf, I've been trying to review in my own mind the incidents in which the United States has been a conspicuous participant or absent in the past month or so. We lost a spy plane over southern Iraq. We've stepped up pressure on southern Iraq. Obviously, in the Middle East, in uh, the in the ongoing dispute between the Palestinians and the Israelis. There's a great feeling that the United States is siding only with the Israelis. The war in Sudan goes on, but we've not taken an active role there. Are there any other signs on your radar screen that would indicate uh, that this kind of thing was likely to happen? Well, you know, Tom, the truth of the matter is that most of the Middle East countries consider the United States to be, you know, the, 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 uh, the main source of support for for. Israel. It isn't. It isn't isolated just in certain states, and uh, you know any one of those people. If you got them aside and asked them truthfully, they would tell you that they were not in favor of our policies with regard to Israel. So, do you think that that probably was the cause of all of this? This uh, continual escalation that has been going on between Palestine and Israel, and there's been an absence of participation. I think that it's fair to say in the part of this administration and all of that. Well, I, I, you know, I, I think that's kind of speculation at this time. I certainly think that. That uh, you know the reason why the United States is hated in so many places in the Middle East is with regard to the support of the state of Israel. And as a matter of fact, they'll openly state that if Israel had not had the support of the United States, it wouldn't exist today. So they go so far as to say that there are people, many, many people, still trapped. When uh, you and I were talking earlier, we were commenting on uh, the sophistication uh, of this attack and the complexity of that. Doesn't that stun you some? It, it really does. I mean, just just what was mentioned by, you know, uh, by by Robert Hager, the fact that uh, undoubtedly, uh, you know, I can't see any uh, U.S. commercial airline pilot flying their plane directly into an obstacle like that. Undoubtedly, there was, uh, you know, somebody at the controls that was able to guide the plane there. That that in itself is kind of scary. I told you earlier about the fact that it bothers me that with all the devices we have against hijackers, that, that, that hijacking can still take place on this scale and, and, and organized in that fashion. Uh, that causes me concern. I certainly agree with what Senator McCain said about the fact that you know, many, many years ago, uh, we abandoned human intelligence. Uh, uh, the attitude was that only bad guys have spies, and, and good guys don't need spies, and we put satellites in the air, and we put a huge amount of investment into technical intelligence at the same time we dismantled human intelligence i don't know what the status of that is today but but uh, but uh, we damn sure need to get somebody inside these organizations uh, i i would tell you that general i'm just going to interrupt you for a moment because we're looking at some scenes that we have not yet uh, had an opportunity to see it does look like a nuclear winter in lower manhattan it is one of the most vital areas anywhere in the world obviously the home of the financial markets, the World Trade Center, lots of residences. Uh, there's been a real revival down there in recent years, and it has a great gray pall of dust and smoke and debris. And of course, overlaying all that is the psychological effect of knowing that there could be a casualty lists in terms of fatalities that could go into the thousands. Yeah. 
I mean, Pearl Harbor, we lost 2,400. And, uh, you know, when you hear the numbers today, it's hard to believe that we're not going to greatly exceed that number. And as I pointed out earlier, in Pearl Harbor, it was a military attacking a military installation. Um, this was the use of innocent people in uh, commercial airliners to attack other innocent people in New York. Uh, there was one military target, obviously, the Pentagon. You can see, if you're sharing, if you're looking at this with me, General, the extent of the damage in lower Manhattan. Yeah, unbelievable. Unbelievable. And, and, it, and you know, it's, the natural inclination is, okay, we've got to hit somebody back. And, and in this case, what's going to you know, be even more frustration to the national psyche is, 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 is you can't hit back. You know, you don't, who, who you're going to hit at this stage of the game. Yeah. Thank you very much, General Norman Schwarzkopf. We'll ask you to stand by. We'll be coming back to you. Uh, this is uh, as effective as a bomb being dropped there. There were two bombs, in effect. Commercial airliners flown into those two buildings, and they came down. We presume, because of the initial explosion, there may have been secondary explosions as well that were detonated in the building by these terrorists. Robert Harper was one of those who was uh, in the area when all of this occurred. Mr. Harper? Yes. Tom, how are you today? Well, tell me where you were when uh, the first plane flew into the first building. Um, I was down below the World Trade Centers. Um, I was uh, arriving at work just a little late, and um, we could uh, the bomb. The, the first plane had crashed into the building, so there were many people, you know, sort of standing around. There were EM, EMS uh, workers running around as well, and you could see the second plane coming around, and everyone sort of pointing up. And then that second plane just crashed into the building. And what about to people who were trying to get out of the building? We had one report of bodies falling through the air and people jumping from windows. Did you see any of that? Absolutely, absolutely. It was a very traumatic day, I think, um, having seen that, because where the initial explosion was, there was a lot of black smoke coming um, out of around, the, I believe it was around the 78th floor, and you saw people jumping for their lives um, out of the 78th floor of the World Trade Center. Um, smoke everywhere, fire everywhere, and people were continuing to jump out of the 78th floor, floor. so people began to run away because once the second explosion happened, um, the debris uh, that was caused by that began to fall everywhere, and everybody just started running toward the mayor's office, and I began to run toward the Woolworth building, which was close to that, and then as I got closer to that, I realized if, you know, the top of the World Trade Center hit the Woolworth building, that building, too, would be affected and it might also fall down. Did you have a sense right away that uh, these buildings could come down? Um, not initially. For about 15 minutes or so, people only thought, you know, they couldn't really tell what had happened. And only after the second plane hit did people realize that, you know, this is probably something that was orchestrated. Uh, and so then people initially who had, you know, been trying to go back to the scene and try to help people realized that another plane had hit the building. And that's when people said, look, this can't have been a mistake. Uh, where are you now? Um, I'm outside of the emergency room at Presbyterian Hospital. Um, I've just been released uh, for uh, smoke inhalation. I've been in the hospital there. They rushed me to the hospital um, you know, not too long after that because the black soot and everything that was associated with the building, I mean, heavy black smoke engulfed the entire financial district. Um, you know, any, from 9 o'clock onward, and um, we, we were so sitting on the side of the road. EMS workers were there um, administering um, oxygen to people, thinking that everything was okay. And then as they began to realize that the explosion might have caused so much trauma to both the World Trade Center that they would fall, then everybody just began to, ran, be began to run because they, they saw that the, the building itself was actually going to fall. So all of the people that had gone to help out were then put in, you know, double danger because you were then running, and the building literally we came and fell, you know, in, over the entire, like, financial district area. It was a complete nightmare, black smoke everywhere. People were running toward the Brooklyn Bridge, running, you know, away from the mayor's office, afraid that the, the falling part of the World Trade Center would hit other buildings, and that would, you know, cause a topple effect. Thank you very much, Mr. Harper, and... Uh Thank God you're okay, and I hope that uh, you'll be able to deal with all of this. We do appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, it's been a real mess, you know, and I can't, I, coming back in the ambulance, you know, somebody said, you know, one of the things that they remembered, you know, thinking about is the date today is September 11th, so 9-1-1. So, you know, it's something that can't really go without notice is that this was completely planned, completely orchestrated. You know, whoever did this um, has been planning this, obviously, for a very long time. Thank you uh, very much, Robert Harper, who was one of the survivors who was uh, just a little bit late to work this morning but then got caught and the uh, devastating attack on the Twin Trade Towers. Uh, they, it's, a, it's hard to, uh, for me to overstate to people who are unfamiliar with New York just how dynamic that area is in terms of people coming and going. The two uh, 
towers are 110 stories high, or they were. Uh, 20 to 50,000 people would work in them at any one time. It's uh, just a few blocks from the uh, stock market and from many of the principal banks in America to say nothing of residential areas. And we will not know for some time what the death toll is there, to say nothing of the number of people who have been injured, so many of them with burns. Let's go to Washington now and NBC's Washington Bureau Chief Tim Russert. Tim, uh, give us the state of play in the nation's capital right now. We know that the White House and the State Department and CIA have been evacuated. Dennis Hastert has been removed. Where is Dick Cheney at this hour? Do we know? Tom, he is in a secure location. They won't tell us exactly, but I do know that he is there with his top-level aides. Uh, we have heard from some of those people. Uh, he has been in constant communication with the President of the United States and the National Security Advisor Condoleezza Rice. Tom, I've been speaking to people in the intelligence and law enforcement community, in and out, those who have served, those who are serving now. No one is the least bit surprised that there was a terrorist attack on the shores of America. Every person, to a man and woman, absolutely stunned, not only by the magnitude, but by the precision of this attack. Uh, they are absolutely convinced that there's a, only a small, few cells that could possibly have done this. And this is quite interesting because I didn't realize it until it was pointed out to me. Every one of the four hijacked planes that Bob Hager talked to you about was bound for California. In the words of this high-ranking official, the bastards knew they all had a plane full of fuel for the maximum impact upon collision. There is, in my experience in Washington, unprecedented anger here, but no one knows how or where to channel it. Right now, it, the situation is a bit chaotic. Communication is difficult. But the Bush administration is underscoring that the president is in charge, in command, in constant communication, and will bring these people to justice. They just know it's going to take a long, long time. Tim, it's also going to be a test of the political maturity, if you will, of Washington. It's a city that has been so riven by what many would describe as petty political disputes. But this is one nation on this day. Suddenly, the Social Security lockbox seems so trivial, Tom. One official said to me, Tim, your life is going to change, but more important, your son's life is going to change forever. America will never be the same after September 11, 2001. The levels of security, heightened tension, uh, the way we look at each other and look at our institutions uh, will, in fact, be altered. Uh, that will bring uh, some gratitude, if you will, to the terrorist. And that's why we as a nation, Democrats, Republicans, Independents, are, as they talk with one another today, are absolutely unified in their attempt to strike back, but also try to put salve on the national psyche so we don't become an armed camp resisting an enemy we really can't identify and never know when it's striking. Because the consequences psychologically for this country are every bit as great as they are physically for America as well. It is worth pointing out, I suppose, that we all breathed a great sigh of relief when the Cold War came to an end with the collapse of communism. And yet there was nothing as devastating as this for this country during that long, cold twilight that we faced down communism in Moscow with its considerable nuclear arsenal, which it still has in place, obviously. You know, Tom, it's a very important point because all during this past few weeks, the debate about missile defense systems, uh, many people were saying publicly, even those proponents or the detractors, well, you know, we, we're a long way from research on this, but there is a potential threat of a rogue nation launching a missile or an accidental launch from Russia or China modernizing, modernizing force, modernizing their force. But, but everyone kept saying the true risk, the real risk is terrorist attack. And we plain don't know how to defend ourselves. But again, and let me underscore this, People are absolutely stunned, disbelieving that something so well coordinated, something is with a tick-tock like this, four hijackings within a matter of an hour, and then being able to take those very planes and drive them into the World Trade Center and the Pentagon. And there is growing suspicion, Tom, here, that the plane that landed, it crashed in Pennsylvania was most likely headed for the Capitol or White House. That's the operating theory of many of the people I've spoken to today. Thank you very much, uh, NBC's Tim Russert. Uh, the equation has changed for all of us, personally and professionally, in the course of the last several hours. And we'll be dealing with this for a, a long, long time. But first, we want to take you through the eyewitness accounts of people who were witness to what happened here on a very sunny early fall morning 
in New York today. Some of the eyewitnesses. I spent the year in combat. I never saw anything like this. Before a lot of people died. Nothing this devastating. We carried a bunch of people that we found lying in the debris. It was complete darkness. We stumbled over some people. We picked them up. You are watching NBC coverage uh, of an attack on, on America. And good morning. I am Dan Green here at uh, our studios here at KSBW. It is indeed a dark day for this country. We will rejoin network coverage in just a moment, but we do want to bring you up to date, if you are just joining us, into exactly what happened this morning. This is what we know. Shortly before 6 o'clock our time, terrorists crashed two hijacked airliners into New York's World Trade Center. You see one of the attacks there. This was a coordinated series of attacks. They brought down the twin 110-story towers. Both of the World Trade Center towers no longer exist at this time. Another plane slammed into the Pentagon today in Washington, bringing the seat of government itself under attack. One other hijacked plane also, also crashed, this one outside of Pittsburgh. These are the confirmed flights that we know that have crashed so far today. American Airlines Flight 11, it was a Boeing 767 in route from Boston to Los Angeles. It crashed into the World Trade Center. That had 81 passengers on board with nine flight attendants and two pilots and a full tank of gas. American Airlines Flight 77, Boeing 757, headed from Dulles Airport in Washington to Los Angeles. That crashed into the World Trade Center. That plane carrying 58 passengers, four flight attendants, and two pilots. United Airlines Flight 93, it was a Boeing 757, crashed southeast of Pittsburgh en route from Newark, New Jersey to San Francisco. That plane was carrying 38 passengers, two pilots, and five flight attendants. United Flight 175, a Boeing 767, that flight headed from Boston to Los Angeles. 56 people were on board, two pilots, seven flight attendants. The airline will not say right now just where that plane crashed. We're still looking for the crash site of that one. By the way, you are probably wondering at this hour, in the event that uh, you or someone you, uh, I'm sorry, that um, perhaps one of your family members, perhaps someone you know may have been aboard any of these flights, and you are concerned at this hour and you would like more information, here are some phone numbers for you. United Airlines, you can get information from United at 800-932-8555, 800-932-8555. The phone number for American Airlines, 800-245-0999, 800-245-0999. Of course, uh, the country is still reeling at this hour. There is deep concern about whether or not these terrorist attacks are indeed over, and so the response has begun. Uh, flags are flying at half-staff across the country. Air traffic has been brought to a halt. Of course, certainly all of our military bases, including those here on the Central Coast, are on high alert. Our own Aaron Clark is standing by in Monterey, and Aaron, I understand that uh, some military or federal executives are here on the Central Coast trying to get back uh, to Washington at this hour, and again, all airports are closed, that's right? Uh, that is true, Dan. Uh, first of all, on, it's the FBI Terrorist Task Force. That is what we are told, although I really, really want to stress here that all of this is unconfirmed. We're getting this information from a variety of sources. We're told that they are at Hunter Fort, uh, Hunter Fort Liggett and that they may be flying out of the Monterey Airport in the next couple of hours. Uh, that is what we are hearing at the airport, but we don't have that information confirmed, so we'll have to see how that plays out. Um, as you said, yes, all airports are shut down. Highest state of alert here at the Monterey Airport, as is the case in virtually every airport across the country right now. And I was just talking with the assistant manager, and Dan, we have to stress here um, that we're not talking about a couple of hours here. Um, it could be days, she said to me, perhaps even longer. So we have a very, obviously, a very, very, very serious situation, and planes, at least commercial planes, are not going to be flying anytime soon out of Monterey, out of San Francisco, out of San Jose, anywhere. So we're just going to have to sit tight, wait and see. Obviously, if you have a flight in the next couple of days, you want to call ahead of time. Uh, to be honest with you, the, the busiest uh, people here at the airport today are the rental agencies. Of course, people coming in, they can't get out, so they want to rent a car to at least get home or a place where they feel safe. So that's where it stands right now. As far as that FBI task force, uh, we're all sitting out here uh, waiting to see if that indeed uh, unfolds. But at this point, we don't know if it will or exactly when it will. And Aaron, we want to stress that uh, if you are planning to, to fly out of Monterey, don't go. If uh, Same story at San Jose and San Francisco. There 
there will be no air travel in the foreseeable future as far as we know there's no point in going to the airport right now and uh, it's best just to stay away it is best just to stay away Dan and to be honest with you I think uh, most people are getting that message uh, the traffic has slowed almost to a trickle here at the at the Monterey Airport we don't see a lot of people coming in a few stragglers here and there uh, that come in find out what's happened and uh, somberly um, walk away and, and find an alternate route to get where they need to go um, it's a tough time here and I got to tell you um, Dan people that work at this airport yeah. really emotional you know they're really connected to the aviation industry and um, in some cases if they don't know people um, that were flying on those planes um, they certainly have a connection and feel a great connection so and, it, and, it's a tough day and all of those planes were headed here to California yes they are yeah. so uh, obviously some Californians probably on those flights as well and and really the death toll uh, will be staggering when this is all said and done Aaron thank you very much we will check in with you again in a few moments just to update you California Governor Gray Davis and his staff uh, have been responsible Responding. The governor is convening the Highway Patrol's command center. We expect a news conference fr from the governor sometime in the next few hours. And uh, if we can take you, take you to that live, we will. We also expect to hear from the president in a short time. And, of course, as soon as that happens, we will take you to NBC News coverage of this tragedy. As we have told you, three of the four planes that have crashed, uh, possibly all of them, were en route to California. All of them, as Tim Russert said moments ago, uh, with full tanks of gas headed to California. So uh, to recap for you in terms of what, what will take effect here in California, all state buildings are on heightened security. Here on the Central Coast, the Office of Emergency Services has been up and has been running all morning long. And uh, Action News reporter Kate Callahan is standing by. She is in our Salinas newsroom. Kate, you have been following this uh, throughout the morning. And what is our situation here on the Central Coast? Well, Dan, first we want to address the need for blood. As you can imagine, that need is an urgent one. At New York hospitals, hundreds are already lining up to give blood. With thousands injured, we are told hospital workers were literally on the streets yelling for blood donations. Now, at this hour, 80,000 pints of blood are on their way to New York from the Red Cross. Now, Red Cross officials tell us your donation of blood is one way to help. The best way to help the victims, they say right now, though, is to donate money. What we're doing here locally today, as, as you can imagine, this is just devastating news for everyone around the country. Uh, we're asking people to give to the National, to the American Red Cross National Disaster Relief Fund. Now you can send your donations or you can take them there yourself to the American Red Cross at the address on your screen. It is 942 Lupin Drive in Salinas. Now, if you would like to donate blood, you can do so at two locations on the Central Coast. You can go to the Chomp Hartnell Blood Center at 576 Hartnell Street in Monterey. That number is on your screen. It is 625-4814. Once again, that number is 625-4814. Or you can go to the Tri-County Blood Center in Salinas, and that is at 969 North Main Street in the Sherwood Garden Shopping Center, and that is right across from the Rodeo Grounds. Their phone number is 751 one nine nine three. Once again, that number is seven five one one nine nine three. So again, blood or your donation of money will help at this point. We also want to make you aware of several closures, both nationally and locally. All airports, as you and Aaron were talking about, Dan, all airports nationwide are closed at this time and closed indefinitely. Now, locally, the Naval Postgraduate School has shut down for the day. All California immigration offices have been closed. San Francisco schools are closed for the day, but we know of no closures right now for any schools, elementary or high school on the Central Coast. Now, also in San Francisco, the Transamerica Pyramid Building and City Hall are both closed down. In Southern California, Disneyland in Anaheim has been closed until further notice. And Dan, of course, will continue to keep you up to date throughout the day on all of these issues. Back to you. Katie, thank you. Also, if you uh, plan to be traveling throughout the day, we want to let you know that uh, we will be uh, simulcast throughout the day. Here are the, here are the radio stations you can hear us on. Uh, KTX 1460, KTOM 1380, also FM's uh, radio stations KTOM 100.7, uh, KDON 102.5, KOCN 105.1, and KSJO 92.7. Again, uh, we will be broadcasting, simulcasting throughout the day with the latest information we can get to you on those radio stations, the Clear Channel radio stations here on the Central Coast. Uh, we will be 
efforting as much as possible all the latest information we can about closures that will affect you and developments here on the Central Coast. We will have them for you. But uh, right now we are going to go back to NBC News' coverage from New York on this attack on America. No, it's, it's, it's terrible. Uh, it's hard to say you can be lucky in any respect in something in, in such a catastrophe. But one of the great dangers still lurking out there is that it could have involved some kind of weapon of mass destruction. But at the same time, uh, it's hard to understate the amount of damage that has been done here physically and certainly in terms of loss of life. When you have an institution like the Pentagon attack, the World Trade Center's attacked, and the plane that went to Pittsburgh might have been headed for the Capitol or the White House. for Yes. No, this is terrible. A, a, as I said, a catastrophe. Clearly a very sophisticated terrorist attack. Uh, the, our intelligence community has headed off some in the past year or two. Uh, their ability to evade our usual intelligence gathering methods in order to pull this off is extraordinary. And, and one question now we need to focus on is not only why did this happen, but where do we go from here? Well, short term, if you were the National Security Advisor now back in your old office in the White House, what would be your recommendations in terms of a suppression of some of our normal liberties that we have in this country? Well, we mustn't defeat our liberties in, their, uh, in trying to defend them. I think what I would be uh, urging now is, first of all, of course, uh, get all the information we can immediately while dealing with the uh, human dimensions of this catastrophe. And then thinking ahead, uh, I think there are three fronts we have to act on. One, there must be, once we have identified the source of this, we must, there must be an American uh, response to this of some kind. Uh, secondly, I hope that this will uh, encourage us to even think in new ways about the nature of our security threats and increase our preparations, for example, for the Coast Guard in defending our ports against uh, possible incidents like this, uh, customs, the uh, Immigration and Naturalization Service, and improving our organizations, uh, our organization for uh, dealing with catastrophes like that. There, there's been progress on all these fronts, but uh, not enough. And finally, and I think this is very important, we need to recognize that there is only one group out there that is trying to kill Americans, and that are these terrorists. We are at war with them, and it is not enough for us to attack simply on an American basis. We need to develop a global strategy for a global alliance, for a global war uh, against these terrorists, including, for example, making sure that any nation pays a terrible price when it provides sanctuary for terrorists. Uh, thank you very much, Anthony uh, Lake, uh, former National Security Advisor to uh, President Clinton now an author and professor uh, uh, here in uh, the eastern part of the United States. We were just told that uh, the uh, British Prime Minister, Tony Blair, has stopped all civil flights over Great Britain, whether that was precautionary or in response to a threat that his government received. Uh, we cannot say, but all flights there have been uh, canceled. Let's just take you through now a quick summary that uh, does not begin to tell the true story of this day, but it is a kind of a checklist of what we've been through. Four airliners, two American, two United, headed for California from Washington and Boston, were hijacked, two flown into the World Trade Center here in New York, one into the Pentagon, one crashed outside of Pittsburgh. The World Trade Center, two 110-story buildings, collapsed completely in lower Manhattan. Uh, we're showing you Somerset County, the airport near Pittsburgh, where the other United plane went down. All of this happened in the eastern seaboard, but that's just the geographical connection. This is a wound on America wherever you live, whatever your ideology may happen to be, uh, unless you are in sympathy with the terrorist beliefs. And when those two twin tr trade towers went down, of course, that caused even more damage uh, to lower Manhattan. Um, same time, the Pentagon was attacked by one of the hijacked airliners, a number of dead in the Pentagon as well, in the outer rings, first and second rings near the helipad there. President Bush was diverted from Florida to Barksdale Air Force Base in Louisiana. We're told that Vice President Cheney is in a secure position. We don't know exactly where that is. The third in the line of succession is the Speaker of the House, Dennis Hastert. He was told there's a code red, and he was taken to a secure position as well. Uh, all financial markets have been closed down. Hospitals in New York City over tax. The world's largest, busiest city 
is at the moment uh, all but shut down with tunnels in and out of the city that have been closed for security reasons, traffic off the streets. 30 Rockefeller Plaza, where we work, and other midtown high-rise buildings have been evacuated for this day. All the subways are closed down. Across America, national monuments and other high-rises have been evacuated for the day as well as part of the precaution. Still, no claim of responsibility by any one group. Uh, the only visible signs of celebration have been on the West Bank. The Palestinian people who believe that the United States and Israel are one have been cheering and handing out candy and celebrating while their leaders have been condemning this attack. Um, NBC's David Bloom is in midtown Manhattan now with a view over the city skyline. And David, it is still stunning for those of us who live here to look behind you and not see the Twin Trade Towers. Well, Tom, it is a horrific scene behind me looking from midtown Manhattan to lower Manhattan. And if anything, it's gotten more disheartening as the hours have passed. In this sense, the billowing cloud of smoke and debris that you see behind me is in fact growing more smoke, more deb debris floating up into the air. The best estimates, Tom, that the New York Police Department is making at this hour in terms of casualties is only to say that they expect them to go into the thousands in terms of dead and injured. We know that the victims are being shipped to individual hospitals, not merely here in Manhattan, but in the entire tri-state area in Connecticut, in New Jersey as well. One hospital, St. Vincent's in Greenwich, reports simply being, Greenwich Village, reports simply being overwhelmed with casualties. They say that they've put out an all-points bulletin for burn specialists and plastic surgeons they need all the help they get and it's no doubt all the hospitals do here in Manhattan here is the sequence of events starting with the first terrorist attack this morning the first plane attacks the World Trade Center's South Tower at approximately 842 Eastern Time airline officials say at least two American Airlines flights and two United Airlines flights were hijacked today and that the attack planes were the hijacked domestic flights. Roughly 21 minutes later, approximately 9.03 Eastern Time, the second large jetliner can be seen taking dead aim at the World Trade Center's North Tower. Emergency officials estimate 20,000 or more people may have been inside the two 110-story buildings at the time of the attacks. Eyewitnesses report victims falling and in some cases jumping from the two buildings. At approximately 9.40 a.m. in Washington, D.C., a third hijacked plane crashes into the Pentagon in a burst of flames, one side of the building collapsing. Non-essential personnel from federal buildings, including the White House and the U.S. Capitol, are evacuated. 9.59 a.m., the South Tower of the World Trade Center collapses, an unknown number of people still trapped inside. One half hour later, at approximately 10.28 a.m., the North Tower of the World Trade Center collapses. Rubble, debris spreading for blocks. In a separate but apparently related crash, a fourth hijacked plane, a Boeing 767, crashes in western Pennsylvania, about 80 miles southeast of Pittsburgh. The FAA closes all domestic airports, shutting down all U.S. airspace. At this hour, airline and FAA officials believe the four hijacked planes include American Airlines Flight 11, a Boeing 767, bound from Boston to Los Angeles with 90 passengers and crew aboard, crashed into the South Tower of the World Trade Center. American Airlines Flight 77, bound from Washington, Dulles to LAX with 64 passengers and crew, believed to have been the plane, crashed into the Pentagon. United Airlines Flight 175, bound from Boston to Los Angeles with 65 people on board. By early accounts, the plane which crashed into the World Trade Center's North Tower. And finally, United Airlines Flight 93, the Boeing 757, which crashed in western Pennsylvania, carrying 45 passengers and crew. As to who might be responsible for this series of terrorist attacks, as you mentioned, Tom, as yet no claim of responsibility. But we certainly can tell you what senior U.S. intelligence officials, both in this administration and in the Clinton administration, are telling us that the prime suspect is clearly the Saudi-born terrorist Osama bin Laden. One official told us that only he has the capability, the experience, and the motivation to carry out an attack like this. But again, that is just their initial speculation, finger-pointing. We clearly don't know at this hour who is responsible for this death devastating and horrific attack. Thank Tom. you. Thank you very much, NBC's David Bloom. It goes without saying that whoever is responsibility, this is an act of war. 
declared on the United States a terrorist act of war, unprecedented in our nation's history. The United States was attacked, of course, 60 years ago this year at Pearl Harbor. 2,400 people were killed. The Japanese military attacking an American military installation that got us involved in World War II. But this terrorist war, they used innocent Americans on commercial airliners to attack other innocent Americans, and they struck at the heart of our civilian life in New York City. And they've caused great psychological damage across the country as well, say nothing of their attack on the symbol of our military strength, that is the Pentagon. And they took innocent people to their deaths in Pittsburgh in the crash of that hijacked airliner as well. NBC's Rahema Ellis is down near the World Trade Center. Rahema? Tom, I am four blocks from the World Trade Center. The sky is dark with thick black smoke. Apparently, there are still fires burning. Some of the emergency workers told me that they cannot get into the exact area of the World Trade Center to help people whom they fear are trapped in the rubble because the fires are still burning, in some instances, out of control. Just a few moments ago, and just only two blocks from here, we were at the NYU Downtown Hospital. It is the only emergency room in the lower portion of Manhattan. It was the place where the first victims from this blast were taken, and hospital officials tell us they have turned their cafeteria into a triage area. They have people lined, they say victims are wall to wall with inside that cafeteria and all throughout the hospital. Everyone has been called into service to assist in this blast. I talked with a man who was able to walk out of the hospital. His name was Peter DeCerbo. He was on the 47th floor of the World Trade Tower, number one. He said when the explosion, when the first explosion occurred, he said he felt the building shake. He became frightened, as did all of his co-workers, he said. They didn't know what to do. Finally, he said, and quickly, they started to run down the stairs, 47 flights. And he said he actually carried a woman on his shoulders down those 47 flights with him. Another man who was on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange had come out of the building and was standing. He looked up, and he literally saw the second tower of the World Trade Tower come crashing to the ground. He said he saw it coming down, and then he and hundreds of people around him started to run. When he got to a point of some near safety, the man who's 37 years old said he dropped to his knees and he started to pray because he thought that he was going to be dead. As one emergency worker said to me, he said, do you know what day this is? And I said, it's September 11th. He said, yes, it's 911. And all of New York right now is in a state of 911. Tom? All right, thank you very much. Uh, NBC's Rahema Ellis with a vivid account of what has been going on down there. Uh, we should also point out that uh, we're getting a number of uh, telephone numbers for people to call. Morgan Stanley has a very considerable facility in the World Trade Center. It's one of our uh, premier investment banks, obviously, in America. And that number is 1-888-883-4391. For those of you who are in the New York area and may have families or uh, friends who are employed by Morgan Stanley at the World Trade Center, some it's a small city, those two towers. Some 50,000 people at one time or another could be passing through there during the course of a day. This was to be the New York primary day to pick the candidate who may succeed, Mayor Rudolph Giuliani. That election has been canceled. The mayor spoke with reporters moments ago. Our focus now has to be on, on trying to evacuate as many people as possible, save as many lives as we, as we possibly can, and uh, make the city as secure as possible. The subways are running and the rest of the city Lexington Avenue starting to run again, so people need to use the subway to get, get out of Lower Manhattan. They'll be able to use the subway. And uh, we need people out of there so that the rescue efforts can go on all during the, uh, the afternoon. I suspect they'll be going on through the night. And we'll, we'll be getting relief from the National Guard and the federal government later, later today. Mr. Mayor, any indication on the ballpark number? Uh, I don't, I, I, do, I do not want to, I, do, I don't want to, I, obviously, there are all kinds of numbers that are swimming in my head as to what the numbers must be, but I don't know. I have no idea what the numbers are. It's horrible. I think any of you that saw this have probably never seen anything like this before, that people jumping out of the building and... Uh, it's a horrible, horrible in terms, thing to see. In terms of the police mobilization, uh, maybe the commission can tell us how, uh, what's going on downtown. Have you brought in uh, additional... Uh, there's additional resources coming from all over the city. We've activated both duty MOS to come in. Uh, we're getting the assistance of New Jersey and the outlying uh, outer line counties. 
and, uh, and they're all kind of pushing in toward Lower Manhattan. Are, are, we, are you, either of you hearing anything from uh, the federal government with regard to either uh, what's going on in Washington or intelligence or any, anything out of the only, federal law enforcement? The only, all, only thing that we've heard is what, what uh, I guess it's publicly available that the Pentagon was attacked, that there were other apparent attempted attacks in other parts of the country, uh, some of which were, were stopped. And I'm not, I'm not sure I know how accurate all that information is, but uh, it appears as if there have been either attacks or attempts to attack uh, various parts of the United States. Uh, well, the Mayor Rudolph Giuliani of New York City, uh, on that last point, we have, hey, he said that he had no confirmation of that. We have heard no word whatsoever of other attempted attacks across this country. Uh, any number of states, as you might expect, and municipalities are on the highest possible state of alert. In Florida, Disney World has shut down and evacuated uh, everyone from those facilities. That's been true of many of the entertainment centers in California as well. The uh, Liberty Bell and Independence Hall have been closed with other national monuments in the Philadelphia area. In Texas, some buildings were evacuated. Uh, of course, all airports across America were closed down as well. In Washington, all military, pardon me, in Alaska, all military forces there are on the highest possible stages uh, of alert. At, uh, in Alabama, that's the home of the Redstone uh, Missile Command Center, Marshall Flight Center, that has been closed today as well. No one knows if these terrorists might still attack again today. It does appear now, and uh, I, I want to add a cautionary note to all of this. It appears now that this uh, first wave of attacks is over. Let's go to NBC's Robert Hager now. Robert, uh, do you know all the planes that were in the air that were not hijacked? Have they arrived safely at that's, some destination? That's a very, very important piece of information, and the FAA has just been able to confirm it, that the last of any scheduled domestic flights, last of the domestic flights that were in the air, are now known to have reached their airports, so there is no other domestic flight that's unaccounted for. The implication is there's no other hijacked flight up there, uh, that this is over as an event. Now, having said that, there are some international planes still in the air. Uh, there were 22 as of about uh, an hour ago. Now the FAA is saying that's down to a limited number. So apparently many of those have landed at this point. The remaining international flights, they're all inbound, are headed for the West Coast. So they were, initially the idea was to divert them to Canada, and then they said they should land in the U.S. So those planes are still in the air, but in terms of these domestic airliners, as you say, there were four hijacked, uh, four hit targets, and one went into a uh, rural area of Pennsylvania, so that accounted for all four known hijackings. Now at this point, any other plane that's still in the air, and, and this is all triggered by the fact that the FAA put a hold on any new flights leaving airports as of 9.30 this morning. So these are the leftovers of those that were already in the air. Now they're all on the ground, and all accounted for, so there appears to be no more threat in the air. Tom? Uh, any indication from the FAA on when they may lift the grounding of all flights in this country? There is absolutely none, and I, I suspect that uh, in spite of the pain it will cause the nation that this is going to last for quite some time because I wouldn't think they'd want to put craft back in the air until they know more about how this all came about. So I'm imagining at a minimum that this is going to last into tomorrow and could be beyond that, as again, in spite of the economic uh, hardship to the nation and hardship to people. But I think we're in for a long haul here in terms of grounding air traffic. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, NBC's Robert Hager. It uh, does pose all kinds of problems because people travel for reasons other than a vacation. Obviously, business, you can deal with that as well these days with uh, uh, the internet and with uh, faxes, but what about funerals or medical emergencies of one kind or another? We'll have to find a way of dealing with that within our air traffic system in America, too, and you can be sure that security is going to change radically in the next uh, 24 hours when you go to an airport because four airplanes were hijacked today. Uh, and they were used as uh, guided missiles, in effect, by terrorists attacking American institutions. This is also having an effect overseas. The uh, stock market in, in Germany has been evacuated because of a bomb threat. And in Great Britain, the prime minister has banned all civil flights over that country. Let's go to NBC's Keith Miller now in our London bureau. Keith. Tom, an extraordinary ripple of shock, anger, horrific.
went right through Europe. At least three governments went into cabinet emergency uh, meetings. Tony Blair, of course, canceled all civil flights. He also had a, a special emergency cabinet meeting. Uh, they evacuated several large buildings here as well. The, the horrific uh, occurrence in the United States has rippled right across the world. Tony Blair had this statement to make a little bit earlier tonight. I have just chaired an emergency meeting of the British Government's Civil Contingencies Committee and I would like to explain some of the measures that we have agreed to take here. There are a range of precautionary measures. We have stepped up security at airports to the highest levels. No flights will take off from the United Kingdom for which we cannot apply the highest standards of security. For You're watching British Prime Minister Tony Blair uh, condemning this attack this morning. This is Dan Green at our studios here at KSBW TV here on the Central Coast. We want to bring you up updated, uh, we want to update you, I should say, on exactly what has been happening around the Central Coast. As we mentioned earlier this morning, uh, we do believe that some uh, high-level officials from the FBI or the military are here on the Central Coast, and we've had some developments out at uh, the airport in Monterey. Our Aaron Clark is standing by Aaron, what can you tell us? Uh, well, just moments ago, Dan, we saw four helicopters, at least one of them or two of them, I believe, military helicopters fly into the Monterey Airport. Of course, very unusual right now because nothing is flying across the country. Four helicopters came in and landed. There is a great deal of speculation that they are indeed carrying members of the FBI Anti-Terrorist Task Force, and I believe we are looking at pictures of those helicopters flying in. And this, Dan, I'm telling you, was just maybe 30 seconds ago. So there's a great deal of speculation that this is the FBI anti-terrorist task force and they're trying to get these um, gentlemen and these women we're uh, presuming um, uh, back east to where um, uh, all of the war plans so to speak are developing um, so th that is the speculation right now again we have none of this confirmed and um, certainly the FBI is not talking we have asked every official that we can think of here at the right. airport if this is indeed happening and of course um, the uh, universal is no comment um, so at this point uh, there are four helicopters on the ground here at the airport we have not seen any kind of a military airplane, which we are expecting, and that has been the, uh, the rumors all morning that a military jet was going to come in and take this task force back to the East Coast. We have not seen any signs of that plane just yet. Um, but as we said, those four helicopters just it just came in about 30 seconds ago. And uh, I think a lot of people uh, may not really appreciate the fact that uh, what a critical center uh, the Monterey Peninsula is for the military and uh, for the uh, intelligence community. We are home, of course, to the Naval Post Graduate School. Uh, we are we are home to the Defense Language Institute, uh, which trains a significant number of uh, agents for the Central Intelligence Agency and certainly for the military. And uh, we are also home to the Monterey Institute. Institute of International Studies, which is one of the premier think tanks in terms of international terrorism here on the Central Coast, Aaron. Yeah, and Dan, we are told that this task force was in an annual training session at Fort Hunter Liggett, um, and, and this happens every year, which also sort of begs the question that I, obviously we don't believe that they would send um, a great number of their top anti-terrorist people um, to an annual training session if they thought anything was going to happen. So it's also an interesting um, thing to think about it this point um, how much of a surprise this terrorist attack or these terrorist attacks seem to have been um, but clearly um, something is going on here and we do believe they are trying to move um, a fair number of people and and well you know I tell you in, in terms of whether or not they may have seen it coming I, I you have to think about the timing in terms of the closure of military bases across this country which I think a lot of us did not expect and that uh, that was ordered uh, there wasn't a whole lot of talk about it uh, they didn't particularly care to hear from from the public saying that security was an issue and uh, and that's the way it was going to be and it that began on what September 1st I believe yeah it, it seems prophetic uh, prophetic at this point doesn't it Dan let me give you a little bit of perspective uh, I'm standing uh, in a parking lot above the airport the helicopters are down by and Dan you, you know the geography here down by millionaire mm -hmm. um, they have taken them down to that end of the field so they're really out of sight of the main terminal um, um, at this point, we don't really know what's happening. Uh, we certainly do not expect a news conference or um, right. any kind of conversation uh, with these FBI agents, but we'll certainly keep you up to date as to what's happening here. Well, so as far as you can tell us, and we're losing your picture there, Aaron, uh, as far as uh, Aaron can tell us is uh, that uh, four helicopters uh, believed all to be military landed just a few minutes ago at the Monterey Airport. Uh, they landed over at Millionaire, which is a fixed-based operator 
as it has been called, a fixed base operator, which is sort of a, a small private terminal in and of itself. Millionaire is, is a fixed base operator that has been used on contract uh, countless times by the military. It was used uh, during uh, the operation that took place, uh, uh, Imminent Thunder or whatever the, uh, the, that, uh, the name of that uh, exercise that took place in the Monterey Bay some two years ago uh, was based out of Millionaire in large part. And uh, they also had planned to use it both, uh, to, both tomorrow and uh, the rest of the week uh, for the Thunderbirds. Uh, and uh, they would be the receiving station for the U.S. Air Force uh, Thunderbirds uh, there in, in, at the Monterey Airport. Uh, and that was to take place this week. Uh, whether or not the air show will indeed take place, we do not know at this time. But, Aaron, uh, we do understand, and at least the, the, what you saw a few minutes ago would give some credence to the fact that we do have some very important people who have to do with terrorism here on the Central Coast that would, uh, I think, uh, desperately like to be back in Washington, D.C. Uh, I think that that is the case, Dan, and I think that that's what they're trying very much to do right now. And they're trying to do it as inconspicuously as possible. Of course, that's tough to do when you have right. all the media lined up here um, watching four military helicopters land when nothing else is flying today. Um, so we'll certainly keep you up to date as to what's happening with that. Um, we do expect some type of military aircraft to land here um, probably within the next hour or so. At least that's what we've been hearing all day. All right, Aaron, thanks very much. Again, uh, they landed just a short time ago. As for the air show, uh, we understand that the board is meeting at this time uh, and will determine whether or not indeed the air show will take place or not. We are told that uh, the Presidio of Monterey and all of the military installations here on the Central Coast have been shut down uh, to access to civilians. Uh, the Naval Post Graduate School classes have been closed for the day. In terms of actual classes taking place at public schools uh, on the Central Coast, we are told that uh, at this time there are no reports of any closures uh, going on. And uh, we do know that things are moving along as per normal. However, uh, there are some significant changes, specifically our airports. As Aaron told you, the Monterey Airport is shut down, as is San Jose and all of the other airports across the country. We heard a short time ago uh, from NBC that uh, all domestic flights that were in the air have landed. As uh, In fact, what, while I speak, we're going to take you and show you uh, the video from NBC. As you can see, that was the scene uh, in New York as the World Trade Center came down today. And what we can tell you is uh, that here on the Central Coast, those uh, schools are open. Our local schools are open. If there is any change in that, we will certainly let you know. Uh, however, all airports are closed. Uh, including uh, Los Angeles and uh, in terms of local officials we do know that Salinas Mayor Anna Caballero uh, was in Los Angeles she is on her way back uh, I spoke with the officials from the Diocese of Monterey Bishop Sylvester Ryan was in Southern California he is en route back here to the Central Coast San Francisco Mayor Willie Brown has shut down the city of San Francisco at least for now he did make a, an announcement just a short time ago and says all is well at least in San Francisco and the city is secure uh, we do want to tell you that as things develop locally, we will be coming on the air periodically to update you on information that is relevant here to the Central Coast. And if you are out and about throughout the day, you can hear us on the radio. We are being simulcast uh, during these updates on the following radio stations. This is the Clear Channel family of radio stations here on the Central Coast. And including KTX, which of course broadcasts our 5 o'clock news every day at 1460 a.m. Uh, you can also hear us on KTOM 1380, uh, on the FM dial, KTOM 100.7, KDOT at 102.4. Side to collapse. Now, even though if you look at the...